All right, welcome to October's Classic of the Month. This time it was voted on by the community. I put up a vote for about a week at the start of the month, and Case Closed by Stephen Delru was the winner. Um, I'll probably keep doing the votes, you know, for the next few months at least. Um, give you guys what you want to see played. Um, and, uh, you know, have a few of my own to mix in now and then. I remember this pack being, uh, you know, pretty decent. Um, a couple, you know, memorable spots in it. I did stumble across it once in uh, Sven Co-op, and I think it's a pretty common um, pack in, in Sven Co-op to play. But, I, you know, the background here is, of course, given in the in the README file. This pack came out in 2001, I guess, so, you know, a nice 20-year-old a nice, uh, map pack. Did I... Did I just land by helicopter? Anyway, I'm supposed to be playing a janitor of Black Mesa, you know, the old alternate perspective, so, uh... I don't know how a janitor gets to take a helicopter to work, but, hey, whatever. Yeah, I hadn't decided if it was a draw, if the vote was a draw, whether I would I would play two or just uh, you know flip a coin or have a revote or something like that. Oh, great! I get stuck in the first like twenty seconds of playing. Okay, yeah, that angled surface is killer. It'll wedge you against things. I guess I can't really get up there. There's nothing to get to anyway. A nice little uh, you know mini base entrance, I suppose. Well labeled. Now, I know this mod does have some custom code in it. I think it's based on Spirit. And there were some credits in the README about custom code. So I'm not sure kind of what what surprises might be in store for me. Subject Bob Dewey. I, I, I used to know a guy named Bob Dewey. Passed away a while back, sadly. Oh, shit goes to hell. Well, it was no blue shift elevator scene, but that was, you know, fairly well done for the Resonance Cascade. I'm a big fan of that scripted scene in blue shift with the elevator. Given that there was only one way to go, that's the only <laughs> that's the only acceptable use of a breakable door. Is that this is clearly literally the only way out of here? Because why would you ever smack a door with a, a crowbar? A pretty decent generator room here. It's an old enough engine where you can kind of get away with the big, you know, rust textures without without detail. You get a little bit of detail here, of course, but I mean, it's not pretty, but it's it's kind of excusable in the gold source engine. Yeah, the breakable door was at least a good gate to make sure you had picked up the crowbar. That said, I would I would have made the door half broken or something already. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if people got stuck there for, you know, a minute or so, kind of just trying the door, not hearing anything, and then just kind of trying to find another spot, another way to progress. I mean. Ah, it's clipped off. 
smart because of troublemakers like me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else here to see. Yeah, if you want to, you know, kind of make that door bulged or partially broken so it's clear. I mean, this is kind of a nitpick because there's clearly no no way out of there. And you can't get past it without getting the crowbar. So in that in that respect, it's a good, you know, a good bit of, uh, of level design to make sure the player has the crowbar before leaving. Which is not always the case in, uh, in, in user-made maps and mods. And if you miss the crowbar, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of stuck here. You just got to run through all these guys until you get the gun. All right, so I've been playing so much... Sven Co-op recently, <laughs> which is awesome, by the way, if you guys haven't tried that in a few years. Um, but the barnacles now grab like other stuff too. So I actually can't remember if they grab head crabs, but um, they've added a lot of things to Sven Co-op that aren't in the original Half-Life. I mean, you know, pretty run of the mill so far. We got, you know, kind of standard Black Mesa layouts and assets here. Oh, and it's the old, uh, this is an old version of the Half-Life code. You see how I can keep reloading the Glock without shooting a bullet? That was a bug they fixed several years ago. But... Yeah, you should give uh, Sven another try. It's it's come a long way. Not just come a long way. It's it's really grown way beyond its original kind of its original scope. I mean, they basically got a you know Gold Source engine uh, license or access, and it's a, it's now a basically a customized version of Gold Source. So they've expanded limits. The maps can be humongous now. You can do a lot of things. Even as a mapper and, and with uh, scripting that you could never do in Gold Source. So I'm actually considering one of these days maybe building a single player map on Sven Co-op. Um, because of all the expanded limits and, and um, Svengen they call it. The Sven engine, get it? I'm not sure quite how that would work and I've got a lot of learning to do in terms of the what's available in Sven Co-op, but... I think it'd be nifty. Nothing. Oh, that was close. So I'm guessing I have to lower this giant sort of double drawbridge here. Hmm. Foreshadowing. straightforward so I'm a big fan of these textures this is the tunnel set the TNNL set of textures um, and this is this is put to pretty good use. Uh, I like the little kind of following the contours of the texture with the um, with the shape of the walls here. Gives it a half-life look, but gives it a little bit of a freshness too. Got my head chopped off there.
There's some competent work. I like the shape of these hallways. I would like to see a little more sort of vertical headroom with the ceilings, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a minor complaint. We'll see what the rest of the rest of the areas we get to look like. Right now it's a little, you know, well, I like the big drawbridge area, but it's kind of a little corridor, room corridor feel to it, which is a little bit on the basic side. the way forward here. I was about to say it's a nice little sort of off the beaten path area, but I think that may be the maybe the actual path. So Yeah, probably it doesn't look like we can do anything else unless this train starts, but I doubt it. Yeah. I think this is telling us that things are busted. Oh my god, ordinance. That sign spelling of the sign will forever kill me. Gearbox fixed it though. In up in opposing force. <clears throat> All right, down we go. Uh, I think a little bit more attention to detail here would sell this effect a little more. He just has a, a solid cylinder with a block of water pouring out of it. And no sound. Mm, not a big fan. <laughs> yeah, the pipes themselves are fine, but if you're going to go for an effect like this, you know, put put 10 minutes of effort into it, to be honest. idea what I'm doing. Just fiddling with with levers. So you should make it a puzzle where you have to find the sign with the right spelling and go fix the sign. <laughs> and then you, know, you can open the door. Oh. A bit of a, a shocked second there. We were both kind of staring at each other. So why are these these crates now like sound like metal? That doesn't make. All right, I get a couple points off for for consistency here. Yeah, like opening a secret area or something like that. You got to go find the uh, the ordinance instead of ordinance sign and put it in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> the grammar Nazi Easter egg. Yeah, although, so, if these were, 
the uh, prefabs, right, from Hammer. Well, was it still Worldcraft back in the day? It might have been 2001. Yeah, I don't know. Um, those are usually inserted as as either pushables or breakables. Um, if they were hand built, then yeah, he probably just forgot to set them as breakable. But yeah, that that's true. If they weren't breakable, they wouldn't have the. Well, I thought the texture was. Yeah, I don't know. I thought the texture sound was set by the materials.txt, but it actually might be the funk breakable properties. So if it, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going down a mapping wormhole here. If it wasn't a funk breakable in the first place, you wouldn't be able to set it to woods, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Never mind. That's what I do. I nitpick. This outdoor area is pretty competent. I like the canyons. Uh, you do have a bit of buried, varied height, sort of at the outside, so. What I see from a lot of new mappers is kind of flat tops to the canyon, which kind of, again, gives it an outdoor but indoor feel. It feels like a room that just happens to be outside. This is a lot better than that. You do, it's a bit of flatness over here. I would have, I would have put some, you know, some bumps or something at the top edge of this if, if it were me, but the rest of the area looks pretty, looks pretty good. You got the obligatory crickets. Hey, dude. It's a cool little firefight. Not too challenging if you, you know, do your best to wait it out there. Um, I hear another grunt somewhere. See in the back of the truck, maybe. I'm not sure we can get out once we jump in the water here. So let's take a look. I missed, damn it. So same thing about consistency here. Why are these crates not breakable at all? And it seems to be a deliberate choice at this point. I, th I would have thought somebody would have caught this during playtesting. Impulse 106. Do I need developer on or anything? I don't know what Impulse 106 is. That might not work. This is an old build of code, by the way, so. I noticed that um, the HUD draw command does not work in this. Well, I tried to take uh, screenshots, and uh, so when you start the maps, they you start with the HEV, so you can't get rid of the HUD by using a, what's a common command now in, uh, in Steam Half-Life, but it doesn't work in this, this version of, of the code. Prince the class name of entity. Yeah, it didn't work for me. Well, that might have been that might have been proof, huh? <laughs> if it uh, if it didn't print anything, it, so it's either not working or it's not an entity. Right? Yeah, I'm not familiar with Impulse 106. Is it one 107? That's the texture name that you're looking at, I think. I don't remember. I have it bound to a key, but... Shotgun blast got me good there. 
So similar type of area. Uh, anything in the water here? Yeah, 107 is handy if you're looking for a specific texture um, from a map that you know. Uh, this bridge doesn't look very trustworthy. Yeah, fine. Oh, I guess I... I'm not sure I could have jumped across. Suddenly, this seems to have become stingy on health. Man. <laughs> you take two shotgun blasts and yeah, just hanging out at 40 health for a while. Irby, did you play this on hard? I mean, I'm getting a lot of weapons, which is kind of worrying me, though. Uh, I'm not sure I like the symmetry of this. I don't mind the occasional monster closet, but... This just seems cheap. I would have offset these a little bit or offset the timing. Yeah, whatever. That's fine. Yeah, I'm not sure I would call this... Uh, go back out there for a second. Um... You know, really complicated terrain. It's pretty good, though. I mean, yeah, I've got no complaints about this. They even got the light catching the top of this. Yeah, no, this is actually pretty nice. I mean, it's a relatively small area in the grand scheme of things, but it's, you know, it's a nice change from the, uh, you know, maybe 80% indoor areas we've been in so far here. I mean, so far, this is a pretty nice mixture of, you know, Black Mesa styled areas. I wouldn't say there's been really any memorable set pieces yet. I mean, the two, the two canyons with the bridges were pretty cool, but oh, this looks even better. Jerks, trying to admire mapping. So noticeable here, unfortunately, is the utter lack of ambient sounds. You went from the occasional cricket and or cricket area, let's say. It was not really the occasional cricket, but... <laughs> oh, hey, Redonk, how's it going? Yeah, it's been a pretty competent map so far. Mod so far, I should say. I would just put a really subtle wind or something here outside. The, the total absence of sound is what's noticeable here. So even something subtle built into Half-Life um, goes a long way. I got a lot of crossbow ammo. Should definitely be using that more. Much needed health kit. I'm thinking the path is blocked, huh? Do we think this is lethal? Oh, not totally. Lethal enough that I want to save my health, though. Actually, I only lost a few points of health and, and my HEV there, so... Yeah, I agree. Total silence has its place 
if you're going for a specific effect and it's and eh, maybe not to generalize i would say it's usually inside right that you want total silence unless something really freaky is happening outside but that wasn't really the case this was just kind of another you know canyon area i was making my way to uh, through to get to uh to get to this area <laughs> Uh, probably should have used a trip mine there instead of the satchel. Oh well. And then some crates unbreakable. I mean, I guess that's right. These are the metal reinforced crates. And at least they have the wood sound. So, yeah. Okay. Nothing else here, I guess. Down we go. Yeah. Nice little effect of crap dropping on my head. Yeah, so this has some nice attention to detail, little effects like that. Despite my complaint before about the pipes, you know. <laughs> oh. Whoops. <laughs> oh. God, where are my auto saves? Damn it. I was just trying to make that jump across the canyon and it it didn't go well. Throwing a grenade. Oh my god. Wait, did he live? Oh no, that was one of the other grunts saying take cover. Oh no, it's this guy back here, right? According to plan. <laughs> An interesting little detail there. I assume I can get up to that room in a few minutes, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't I don't think many of us were really doing well during deathmatch last night. It was fun enough, but yeah. All right, let's try this again. Oh, nope. Oh, what the hell? I am not known for my accuracy. Usually it's just the lucky finding of weapons that oh same zombie okay i am determined nope this slope down here can i not jump nope i can't jump there all for naught it's clipped off anyway i knew it i knew it i knew it Okay, now we're past the death trap, which probably was never meant to be one. But, uh... These slaves seem extra weak. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm on medium, I think. Yeah, I'm on medium. Maybe that's normal, yeah.
Oh, great conundrum three is in development. Yeah, we, we all look forward to that. you there too tricky oh you bitch love the crossbow oh bad guys not against slaves though it's just overkill Yeah, you know the what I really wish was true in Half-Life in terms of difficulty was an easy way to not just change the strength of enemies, depending on, you know, if you're playing on medium or hard, but the number. Um, you know, now Spirit lets you do that built in. You can set enemies to only, you know, be in the map, basically, if you're playing on hard or if you're not playing on easy, for example, so they'll show up in, in medium and, and hard. But that's not part of the standard game, and I always wish it was, because I think it's a really good way to do difficulty instead of just making, you know, the enemies uh, kind of bullet sponges, um, which is what Half-Life tends to do. There are a couple new mechanics added if you, if you play on hard versus medium. For example, the slaves shoot, I think it's, it's at least two times faster in the charge up. So they're more difficult to avoid. And the assassins of course can cloak, but I don't think there's any changes in the grunts say, except for how strong they are. So when I map with spirit, that's actually something I like to do is to only make things appear if they're on a certain difficulty. Oh, yikes. Wait, is that is that true, Erby? The grenade grunts fire faster and they lead their shots. I could believe fire faster, but I'd be really surprised if they changed their aim based on difficulty. I'd have to look at the code for the grunts because you just gave me an idea of what else to change in my um, a mod I'm working on. <laughs> Slightly evil mod, but hey, it's meant to be hard, so... Hey. Maybe not the most effective place for a zombie ambush. Huh, I'd have to I'll have to check that in the code. I did not know that for the grunts. Yeah. Learn something every day. Well, most days. Uh it's been a while since I quick save. Uh you it's your job chat to remind me to quick save as if it's been a few minutes um i get the sense there's not a ton of auto saves in these maps luckily there's not a lot of you know death traps either but occasionally eh, kind of waste zone is fine. What about yours? Your zone. Oh, yikes. Your zone is full of crossbow bolts. I hear you, dude. 
<laughs> Got him. Is there a button here? There we go. Oh, tricky. Nice ambush area. Made me think it was just safe enough to come downstairs. But not quite. No, this is a really well-designed, you know, warehouse-style area, I think. The guys are spread out enough, and, and they he gave them some, uh, you know, some lethal weapons, too. This, this guy was a gren grenadier, obviously. Oh, am I full on grenades? Oh, my gosh. So, and then some of the metal reinforced crates break. So, all right. A few points off for consistency, and I think I'll, I'll probably stop complaining about it at this point, because I know it's an issue. But yeah, I would advise generally be consistent with your crates. If you're going to make the metal ones, the metal reinforced ones, unbreakable, don't let me break them ever. Unless it's, you know, it's got a big crack in the side. Yikes. Just down the hallway is the only way out. So it's been a little linear so far. I, I mean, I like this area. I would have liked to seen a couple, maybe a couple paths out of it. Just to allow for a little more expo exploration. I can't fit under here, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like being able to see the wall there. If you're going to let me see it, you know, make it convincing. But, you know, extend it a bit. Make it go into darkness. Whatever. Nitpicking. That's what I do. And I don't mean to necessarily, you know, pick apart every aspect of the map. I, I do like this is a very well designed area. Not only, you know, kind of structurally, but the layout of the, the uh, enemies was really good here. And the mixture. Unfortunately, somehow, somehow I've ended up with 10 contact grenades, which as we know are like the most OP weapon in Half-Life. Especially when you have ten of them. I actually think Half-Life 2 did a much better job of that, you know, balancing that you only carry three contact grenades. That might be a little low, but um, ten is way too many, in my opinion. We, we must have come through this way. All right. I don't recognize it. All right. Oh, we just looped back. Okay, never mind. All right. Eh, nice little loop then, you know. I shouldn't be complaining about linear gameplay. See, it just trivializes <laughs> multiple enemies often but hey if you give them to me I'm going to use it uh, how would did, did he hit the I don't I don't get it how did he hit that if he was just parked here I'm like, okay never mind I'm nitpicking too much it's a nice little scene, but make it believable, right? Put it put it at an angle. So as if you were driving out of the tunnel, etc., etc. Yeah, okay. I am nitpicking too much on this mod, because I like it so far. It's actually pretty competent, fun. Um, there haven't been many big set pieces, but I like, you know, I like the work he's done with the standard Half-Life assets. This is a pretty nice looking tunnel, you know. Not visually striking, but not boring either. Oh, as you do, just, you know, sometimes put an MP5 in a cardboard box.
Yeah, I've known people to do that too, but actually bend the light post because of it. I mean, you had to put some, you had to put some oomph into that, <laughs> that accelerator pedal to do that. I hear more bad guys, and so another nice approach to the where. I like this warehouse a lot, actually. In fact, I'm going to save here for uh, to come back to take a screenshot later. I think. Again, nothing visually striking. It's you know the standard Half Life assets, but he's got these. Uh, you know, these kind of cranes to carry the, the crates, uh, which are, are custom made. I see a thing right there. So to set it apart from sort of the standard Half-Life, uh, you know, Half-Life Assassin warehouse, let's say. And it gives you a nice a chance to kind of stealth a little bit and approach them. Maybe get the jump on them. There's one over here somewhere. I will use my grenade stealth to get him. There's two there. That's, that's what I mean by grenades are kind of abusable. Not only in the number you can carry and how destructive they are, but if you notice, you just have to launch one and grunts will duck. And uh, that will, you know, kind of stun them effectively for a few seconds, which lets you then kill them pretty easy. Another AI change I've made in my mod. Grunts do not duck when they hear a grenade. All right, interesting uh, sentry placement there. Behind a broken crate, basically. I like it. It's very slightly evil. Didn't miss anything back here, right? I was hoping we'd be able to, oh, maybe we can. We still have to get up here, I think. I was hoping we could maybe move some of these crates and either unlock a new way out or a secret or something. I think we're still... Wait. This, there's... Oh, there we go. Whoops. I, didn't, I meant to bounce that off the wall and not get it caught in there. Yeah, it's really just a mod to play through the uh, the campaign of Half Life, though. There's still a mod DB page up on it. I started it a long time ago. Obviously, haven't been working on it full time, but uh, Scram Half Life is the name. Um, Philip even did a mini feature on it, you know, for uh, Run Things You Live when we did uh, mod features occasionally. Uh, it's got a few custom maps, mainly for the training section and challenge areas, but, um, yeah, it's, we may get to work on it later this year. I have another mod that's a priority that I have not been spending enough time with. Ah, cool. Little, little hidden area. Yeah, Counter Life is fun too. I, I, I've been meaning to add to the site, the Run Think Shoot Live site, um, a couple of mods like that, which are like what I would call campaign mods, which let you play the campaign through in a different manner. You know, there's Brutal Half Life, there's uh, Counter Life, um, there's the one I've been talking about. There's there's Half Pain, of course, all of which are 
kind of add interesting spins on the um, on playing through the, the standard Half-Life campaign. Love these textures, the blast pit textures. Gameplay mod, yeah, that's a good one too. All right. My favorite kind of Half-Life area, radioactive goo areas. I'm a sucker for blast pit. I, you know, this might be my favorite area in the whole mod so far. Right? It's not, again, maybe not visually striking other than the, the bright green goo. Which I wish he had used as a texture light because then you would get just that subtle, like, green glow on the walls and on the, uh, whatever these are, storage vats. That's my only fault with this area. Maybe the flat ceiling, too. I would maybe, you know take that up another 10 feet or so and then make it a little more intricate um but i like the way i like this too this uh this really contrived rube goldberg way to to <laughs> to move around right you've got to ride this ridiculous thing you imagine all the employees have to do this right it's absurd but i love it <laughs> And mod, yeah, that's another one. So this is a good way to start to use slaves in a challenging manner. You know, give them range. Uh, except the one that maybe, you know, was right there as I turned the turn this corner on the stairway. But make them shoot from further away. Um, what was that? Oh, interesting. This has cut off my, my route back up, I guess. Okay. So one of the few parts that has a little bit of a branching path here. Um, we'll see how how far this is, but I'm liking the mood down here too. You know, the red lights with the blast pit textures are a nice combo. Oh, nice. tentacle all right let's check out the let's check out the other path real here if it goes anywhere ah okay it looks like this door opens maybe i'm not sure but this is kind of a silo d yeah probably so we'll probably have to open this uh, a little bit later hey ivory welcome to the stream yeah, so the Rube Goldberg, you know, navigation, as you call it, is a, um, is something you don't want to overdo, right? If you, it's nice to say your map or whatever is non-linear and it's got different ways to approach it, but realize that can really frustrate the player too, even experienced player. Like I would get frustrated by it if, if this path started branching, especially if there was another branch here and they were all long enough that you couldn't immediately determine that one was the quote right way to go maybe there wasn't a right way to go but you tend to think as a player there is a right and a wrong you know way to go about things so you, you kind of want to gate it like that why aren't you you know, feel free to oh, God. thanks for just ignoring him huh um, let me get out of his banging radius for a second. 
Um, you kind of want to gate the player, you know, make a couple branches, but then make them maybe not accessible yet. And then by opening doors or, or turning power on or whatever, you can then allow the player to kind of progress down those paths. I mean, Blast Pit is a perfect example, right? You come across the tentacles. You kind of have the idea that you at least need to kill it. You don't maybe know that your path is, is down the pit yet, but... And then you kind of have to go on a, a miniature um, side quest. Uh, thank you, Zick. Um, to uh, turn the power on, turn the fuel and the oxygen on um, before you can get actually progress down the, the main path. So... Hmm. There's no goodies in that box. I was just evil. All right. <laughs> I thought there'd be some good goodies putting crates right in the right, you know, kind of in the path of the tentacle there, but no, to tempt me. Oh, I see. Here I was wondering what that what these levers did. I would have also added a couple obstacles to make the player not be able to run through that. Make the tentacle a little more of a threat. Uh, I think Blast Pit did a good job of it in that multi-level, uh, you know, silo. The the Blast Pit, I, I suppose. Um, right you could kind of jump down those and take a little bit of damage each level if you wanted to rush through that area, but there was no way really to rush back up that area. So you really had to take care as to how much noise you were making. In this case, you could, I could just kind of run past it without too much danger. This is interesting. Man. Black Mesa is like a death trap. Yeah, you're right. The the um, tentacle in um, surface tension is just kind of sitting out there in the sand. That said, right, there's a lot of goodies right near its base that if you that you're certainly tempted by if you're like low on health or you want you know an extra pack of snarks or whatever. So it it at least goads you into taking the chance of getting really close to the base. Which can also lead to death because you kind of get stuck physically on the near the the base of the tentacle, and then he can easily uh, you know get a swipe in on you. <laughs> nice. So, oh, this is kind of a. Well, I don't know why they're embedded so far, but. Um, I, I kind of like the alternate path offered by the, you know, jumping up the crates here. Even if these were, even if this wasn't an obvious sort of death trap to avoid, I do like the, uh, give, just simply giving the player options of, of how to approach things. It's not always possible. And here, like here, I don't think I can actually jump up here. Right? But... Yeah, it didn't do anything. Uh, can I actually survive under these guys? I think so. Yep. No, I think the most effective use of tentacles um, challenges the player somehow. Not just by allowing them to run through or by forcing them to stealth through, but making, you know, 
maybe allowing choices, whether it's path through the area or, you know, kind of encouraging actual stealth through the area, which, uh, you know, is kind of why they exist in the first place as they are. They're not, tentacles are not killable uh, uh, unless it's, you know, by, by design, like in Blast Pit, where you can fry them with the engine. You can make them retract, you know, for a few seconds by shooting them, but that's it. Oh, interesting. Tough guys. Unfortunately, kind of trivialized with the crossbow. Maybe I should have played this on hard. How was this on hard, Irby, if you're still around? Did you find it pretty difficult? I imagine there's a few sections there which could have been tricky, but you're given so much crossbow ammo and so many contact grenades that I imagine you could uh, make pretty quick work of most of these guys. All right, I think this is our way forward here. All right, there's no door here. Why is there no door on this thing? Who knows? Looks like an elevator or something. I can't get up next to it. I have actually not played Residual Life, believe it or not. Oh, cliff area. Interesting. take a wild stab and say we've got to turn the fan power on so that blows us up and reach that vent i mean straightforward but you know typical puzzle design for half-life it's fine i always like cliffside areas like this hopefully this is this is well done here not a big fan of the skybox with the big obvious border in it but I can look at it. But possibly my favorite level in Half-Life is the cliff on, in surface tension. Even though it is, you know, kind of at its heart, a jumping puzzle, I have to admit. <laughs> um, I just like the, uh, I like sort of the two-dimensional aspect of it. I mean, yes, it's three dimensions, but you really don't have much, I don't know, floor play, f let's say floor space to play with. You know, you, you've got only a little bit of, let's say, lateral movement available to you. Um, and most of the challenge comes in verticality, and uh, that's not very common in, in Half-Life maps. And I think that took it kind of to the extreme by basically making it all vertical. Come back. I probably should just throw a grenade in this room and be done with it. But I'm not. I'm going to break each one individually and be disappointed by most of them. Oh, but sa again. Sometimes you just have to put a satchel in a cardboard box. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Stay alert for a Freeman. That's good advice. Actually, I'm not Freeman. I'm Bob Dewey, right? Oh, that was a bad shot. But hey, it scared this guy right into my line of fire, so I'll take it.
Yeah, no, there's a residual point and there's a residual life. And which a residual point is the first one? I've. If that was if that's the case, I meant to say I have not played residual point. I've not played either, to be honest. But one is a work in progress. One has been out for some time. I have not played either of them. I'm sad to say. Okay, so at least I haven't picked up any contact grenades recently, so I'm down down to one, which is a little more balanced than uh, having ten. Oh, hello. a chunk out of myself with that too, but that's all right. Fan units, yep. For some reason that's not breakable. That is not the texture to use if you want to... Yeah, all right. I'm back to nitpicking, so let's proceed. in here? No. So we need to go all the way back. It's a nice little side quest here. All the way back to our uh, our fan vertical puzzle that we saw at the end of this vent. Nice little bit of backtracking needed. And if you didn't see this to start with, I imagine you'd have to do a little bit of exploring to finally make your way back to figure out this was the path forward. But didn't even have to jump. Yeah, so that, that was the same texture right there, that vent texture that I broke that was used in the other room. So again, it's a matter of kind of visual language and consistency. If you're going to use that texture to denote a breakable vent cover, then I should be able to break every cover I see like it. If it's not breakable, you know, use a different vent cover. Use a different texture. All right, a little more of the office area type. It's a really weird place for an elevator, but hey. This is just for effect, but maybe I need this later. I don't know. Again, nice little sort of, you know, well-designed Black Mesa lab areas. Um, a little bit of variation in height with the stairs. That's cool. Kind of branching areas. Nice little sequences to kind of sell things. Here. Should be able to break that vent cover. Uh, before we proceed through the obvious... Oh trap of a glass <laughs> corridor. Uh, I want to go back and see if I can make my way down that other hallway. Oh. Hi. Wow. Well, I'm getting uranium. Interesting. That leads me to believe there was something very valuable nearby. Wow. Got myself. Sure. 
and that's when we learn the dangers of contact grenades. valuable. Hell yes. Oh man. I was expecting the Gauss gun. Which is also cool. Not as cool as the Egon. Even if this is just turning on the little sample thing, I need to turn on the little sample thing. <laughs> Oh, this seems to be unbreakable, huh? Alright. This is just kind of a showpiece for the moment. Oh, hell. Scared me. Might as well. See, they both ducked at the same place and it was right where my grenade stopped. That was awesome. <laughs> Lucky, I mean. So, nice little details like this, right? Maybe tells a little bit of an environmental story. I'm not sure if this is what killed Barney or not, but it was probably an effect of whatever killed him. Yeah. Well done. Little fans that broke being Black Mesa being Black Mesa. Oh, no grenades. Or I maybe I picked them up already. A lot of grunts here, though. Hmm. Yeah, so... This is, again, really solid. Not many standout set pieces, per se. But all really competently done. Black Mesa-themed areas. Chapters, maybe. mapper after my own heart I love busting walls and things they're busting walls down with lasers oh clever I have to go through here maybe shoot this or not crap can I blow it up Get in there. Okay, unbreakable window. I guess I can just call it crawl through past the laser very carefully. 
You know, this certainly could be the case where a mapper kind of got better as they were making the mod. Um, you get a little more detail in the later maps compared to the earlier maps, perhaps. A little more intricate, you know, puzzles, that sort of thing. Not that the earlier maps were terrible, but... It may, and it may not be skill, it may be... It may be interest, too, right? Like, if you certainly, if you enjoy, you know, Black Mesa Lab styles a lot more than, you know, sort of miniature canyon areas, maybe you spend a little more time, a little more effort, you know, making it look the way you want it to. I think I'm guilty of that, too. Okay, here's an interesting set piece. It's like teleporters or elevators or something here. Yeah, that may have been the case for Timeline, too. I, I didn't notice it at the time, but I think you're right. I did notice a, a real lack of detail. Of course, that last map, that huge open area, was a was a huge set piece for uh, for timeline. All right, I guess we just teleport it here. This is the part I remember. Right, clever little upside down section here. <laughs> Although this doesn't look right. Right, shouldn't be the first aid be at the top if this were viewed right side up? And it's backwards, right? It's not just upside down, it's backwards. Wait, so is this. This is somehow like inverted, not just upside, like rotated upside down, but flipped upside down. All right, this is going to be tricky. Where do we go from here? I guess down this way. Even the sky is flipped. Interesting. Yeah, except this isn't inverted, right? This is just rotated. I gotta think that's just maybe um, lack of attention to detail. Now, that said, this is a cool area. I'm not gonna complain about being flipped versus rotated. That's a that's again a, a nitpick by this uh, this player and mapper. Uh, this is a, a cool section. You gotta kind of rethink your approach to things. Hurts your brain a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what these are. Do those lead to three different areas? I wonder. Oh, it's Zen. Low gravity Zen. Oh, with bad guys. Oh no! Missed it. Oh, not cool. Jerk was shooting at me before the level even faded in. Definitely not cool.
Oh, very cool. Yeah. I like the rift sort of Black Mesa in Zen vibe here. Liking this a lot. This is a very cool area. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just saw what you wrote, Adam. Uh, same. I love it. And I wish I'd see more of it in uh, mods. tight getting through this gap here. That's because Gordon's built like a refrigerator box. Small refrigerator box, but still a refrigerator box. Alright, I don't know what that did, but Thing started humming and I think a laser might have come on. I am all in favor of lasers, so. Oh, uh, sometimes. Oh, okay, we'll check that out. Oh, wait, that, I guess that was it. That was the way forward. I thought there was another path out of here. Okay. Hmm. It's always good to have sort of non-straightforward paths to progress through the level. <laughs> right, that wasn't obvious to start with, clearly. Yeah, although I agree, Irby, to an extent, that a lab area with kind of office textures. But at the same time, having worked in several places that are kind of a mix of offices and labs, it happens a lot more than you might think in real life. <laughs> Where former offices have to become labs and vice versa. Hopefully not from the 1950s, but you know, hey. way to take care of this. Danke. Oh. There seems to be a gar Oh, wait. Are we on Zen? Sneak past him? No. Well, it's fine as long as you. Oh, don't break the glass. Okay. We're. So we're in a lab on Zen, clearly. Unless this was taken there as part of the rift, but I doubt it because this. This tunnel is custom built to uh, span the outdoor section there. Interesting. I also like little, little minor twists like that. Somehow we've got a gravity generator here because we're in Earth gravity. But um, yeah, interesting little spin on it. Like 
the mysterious glowing blobs. I mean, it, this is surprising, you know, a little bit of surprising, right? We haven't had much, let's say, story so far. We're making our way through Black Mesa, of course. Um, we're kind of telling an environmental story here, right? We're now assuming the military is packaging this evil, powerful goo, goo into clearly weapons, as the military does. Do not shoot me with a bee, sir. I hear one more around here. Got him. He's probably not going to come all the way down here, though, is he? Come on, get me. Hey, That's eh, cheating, but all right. I shot his backpack. Counts. Still counts. <laughs> Still bleeds. Totally legal. Another kind of... Indoors this time, but... Interestingly silent area. Not bad. I mean, I. it's fine. It's a choice, I think. It makes a little more sense than the outdoor silent area. Oh, you bitch. Made me lose. Made me miss. Is this called gas bag or something? One of the unused, I think unused, right? Maybe it shows up on Zen. Unused things from Half Life. Not really an enemy. I think it was only ever meant to be like, you know, a prop or decoration, something like that. That was probably a waste, to be honest, but. This has turned into a kind of a a grunt fest with a couple of buddies here and there, but so interesting about how much ammo you get up front, like in the first half of the mod. Um, a lot of contact grenades, a lot of um, crossbow bolts, uh, and have not really gotten much of that since. Which I guess is, you know, it's inter that's a good, interesting approach. Rather than necessarily supply the player as they might need it in a more difficult uh, sections of the mod, you supply them up front, and if they squander it <laughs> on zombies and headcrabs, uh, it's their own fault.
Oh, that's evil. That's an evil place for that guy. Absolutely. Because coming out of the water is one of the more janky things in uh, Gold Source. And that's saying a lot. Oh. Well, I wanted to see what was back. Oh my god. I wanted to see what was back there. <laughs> well, we'll speed through this as best we can. Sorry, guys, I hadn't saved in a while. Noticed this before. This is almost Hubble, huh? <laughs> I don't know if it's a telescope or just a satellite, but it resembles Hubble at least. Yes, we kind of did. There are there auto saves in this at all? I'm, it's not even clear to me. If they are, they're spaced out a little too much for my taste. Because I've just had to repeat. I don't know. Going on five minutes of uh, game here. Yeah, a couple auto saves, but they were a couple maps back, so there are auto saves. And you know, I don't know. I'm of two minds about that. Yes, Half Life has quick saves, and it's kind of the responsibility of the player. At the same time, I think we've all fallen victim to mods that don't have quick saves or have a, a paltry number of quick saves, and it's frustrated us. <laughs> So, as a mapper, I believe they should be fairly frequent because it's not really that fun to replay sections you've played. Unless it's a specifically a challenging section that you know you're going to die. But replaying sort of mundane sections that don't really pose a challenge, it doesn't make sense. So, the more autosaves, the better in general. And now we'll keep running. Oh. That's weird. Oh. Okay, well somehow the door survived. Got it. Of 
For lack of autosaves, Irby. <laughs> was about to unload <laughs> that was g-man if you hadn't caught it oh and terminator music is the end well that's kind of anticlimactic i mean the the running from the bombs at the end was cool but i wish there were kind of a maybe a big set piece or or battle or something at the end there Stephen Delru, a.k.a. Eraser X. So that was pretty competent. That was, you know, an hour and a half pack. Challenging in parts. You know, you may want to crank it up one level of difficulty if you usually play on medium. You maybe try it on hard if you play it. I, I can't say I really noticed any custom code, though. I'm not sure why this was built on Spirit. Does anything ring a bell for you, Irby? You you played it recently. I'm not sure what would have been different in just using standard Half-Life code. Nothing comes to mind, yeah. Sadly, probably another dead website, but... Yeah, thanks for watching um i enjoyed it case closed is definitely worth your time if you're looking for you know kind of a medium sized half-life mod <clears throat> it's of course on run think shoot live uh next month i think i'll put up another vote for classic of the month at the start of november and we'll see what comes out of it um i might get a dmca for this music but we'll have to wait and see <laughs> all right thanks for watching guys